Munchies is a 1987 low-budget sci-fi horror comedy produced by Roger Corman and directed by Tina Hirsch, who was the editor of the much more highly acclaimed and bigger-budget Gremlins. It's obvious that Munchies is highly inspired by and possibly even ripping off Gremlins. Sadly, Munchies didn't nearly get the same amount of financial resources or attention to detail that Gremlins did. There are also some very direct references to Gremlins. The filmmakers knew exactly what they were doing here, and they weren't really trying to hide anything, and I can respect that. Father Simon and son Paul are working an archaeological site of ancient ruins in Peru looking for proof of alien life. The two make an amazing discovery, and quite possibly the greatest discovery in human history. Go on. Oh, look at this. This is unbelievable. It's solid gold. No, not that. But does that look like gold to you? Because it sure doesn't to me. They discover a tiny alien that uh, sort of looks like a bargain Jawa from Star Wars. Evidently, the alien has been living in the ancient ruins undetected by modern society. If you watch the trailer for the movie, you'll see a scene that was cut from the movie that would have belonged in the movie right about here. The scene that was cut reveals a pretty important aspect of the movie, and I kind of wonder why it was cut out. Paul, not too shocked and fairly unexcited by the discovery of alien life, puts the alien in his bag at the insistence of Simon. Simon seemed uh, really excited, but Paul just, he didn't really seem like he cared at all. Paul seemed about as excited as I would be if I uh, discovered that I accidentally bought the good toilet paper. You know, the two-ply, with the uh, texture for extra gripping capabilities. Oh, I got the two-ply in texture for extra gripping. The two smuggled the alien back to America. Paul and his girlfriend Cindy watch after the alien as Simon goes to see Dr. Crowder to inform him of his discovery. Cindy finally gets her first good look of the alien and she too has no real reaction to him other than to feed him some pork rinds and to give him a name, Arnold. We gotta get the guy a name, like, um... What? Arnold Ziffel. Ziffel! The pig on Green Acres? Yeah. What's up with these people? They just discovered proof that we are not alone in the universe. And what do they do? They give the alien a name, Arnold. They feed him some pork rinds. And then they give him a nudie mag. Yes. They give him a nudie magazine. Chicks, Arnold. <laughs> Arnold's amusing himself with Miss July. And you and I haven't seen each other in a very long time. Are you asking me to uh, shirk my responsibilities for some uh, sleazy teenage sex? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Paul and Cindy start making out. Or, or doing something in the bedroom. I'm not quite sure what to call this um, weird, bizarre mating ritual. Simon's brother Cecil and his loser stepson, Dude, break in and steal Arnold. Does Arnold look like a cat to you? Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come on, kitty, 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 kitty. Cecil threatens Dude with the tiniest gun ever and forces him to watch Arnold as he goes out and picks up his wife Mavis at the bus stop. How emasculating would it be to get bullied by that gun? Arnold attacks Dude and then Dude grabs a knife and cuts Arnold into several tiny pieces. Paul and Cindy wrap up their bizarre bedtime activities and realize that Arnold is missing. They find Arnold outside and see that somehow he has multiplied. 
Arnold, now with several alien friends, began to shoot at Cindy and Paul with a shotgun that they stole from Dude. Cindy attempts to seduce the aliens with her waistline as Paul tries to capture them in a trash can. Paul's feeble attempt fails and the aliens steal the car and drive off. Cindy and Paul then rush to pursue them. Before you complain about the aliens being able to drive a car, think about Michael Myers. He did the same exact thing in Halloween and nobody said a word. They actually address that little issue in the movie too. Can't drive a car. He was doing very well last night. Maybe someone around here gave him lessons. So you're saying someone thought it was a good idea to teach Michael Myers a psychotic killer and the embodiment of pure evil to drive a car? The munchies are from outer space and potentially a much more advanced society. Judging by their appearance and behavior, it would seem to suggest otherwise, but it's still a possibility. That's the, the basic setup of the munchies. Does that sound like a movie that you need to see? I'm just going to assume that it's probably not, but you should give it a chance. You may like it. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! I read you. So what's, uh, what's exceptional about the munchies? That is the million dollar question, I suppose. The, uh, the short answer is nothing. It's just a fun, silly, carefree movie. I have to admit, I did enjoy watching it and I did find it very entertaining from beginning to end. I also distinctly remember watching it as a kid and just loving it. So that's probably part of the reason why I like it so much. The most epic moment for me is when I heard the aliens talk to each other for the very first time. Uh, Rudy, how you feeling, man? Leon, what did I have to drink last night? I feel sick. Hey, hey Rudy, where are we? Look at this kitchen. You ever see such an ugly kitchen? Oh, eh, let's go. Come on. I'm just going to ignore the fact that they all knew English for some reason. The voices they use and the way they talk is just so stupid that it's hysterically epic. I actually thought this was a 90s movie as I was watching it, but it turns out it came out in the 80s. To me, it seems like it has a, a much more of an early 90s feel to it. The movie seems like it could perfectly coexist in the same world as Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse. If Pee Wee Herman or Large Mars just showed up, it wouldn't feel out of place at all. The two are very similar in their art design and humor. I thought that Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse was from the 90s too, but it turns out it's also from the 80s. I guess I'm just getting older than I thought. It happens. Just like in Chopping Mall, Roger Corman found a way to sneak in some advertisements for uh, some of his other movies. See the poster in the back there? Does that look familiar at all? Because it should. It's uh, Killbots, and if you look a little closer, you can see a couple of others. Munchies is just a silly, stupid movie that isn't trying to be anything other than that. If you like silly, absurd movies from the 80s and 90s, like um, Hot Shots, Naked Gun, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, you might like this movie too. So what's, what's bad about the munchies? Does it have any shortcomings? Yeah, it's got some shortcomings. Some, uh, some fairly massive ones. Even though munchies is a low budget production, I find it hard to believe they couldn't have done a few things just a little better. It actually has sort of a mild trauma feel to it. And I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. There's really no point to criticize the acting in munchies but I will say that it's quite bad. But the bad acting is part of the humor of the movie 
and its own purpose. And let's be honest here, what would you really expect from a movie called Munchies? Several of the characters are way over the top and almost like living cartoon characters. Most notable would be Cecil and his wife Melvis. And these two, they look just like they walked off the set of Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse. And these two really set the tone for the rest of the movie. When you see these two interacting with each other, you know exactly what type of movie you're in for. How's my baby dude doing? Oh, fine, fine, just fine. One thing I'll never know though, honey, is why you agreed to adopt that worthless kid when you left that no contest of yours. I don't know. I guess I just felt sorry for him because he was so ugly and stupid. The biggest disappointment of the munchies would be the munchies themselves. The aliens in the movie are called munchies, by the way. I uh, may have neglected to mention that. The munchies, which are the centerpiece of the whole movie, they just look terrible. They're just completely horrible. They look just like little cheap plastic dinosaur toys from Walmart wearing robes. I would think that more of the budget would have gone to making more convincing aliens. If there's one thing this movie should have done right, it is have some cool aliens. When you compare the munchies to creatures in other similar movies, like uh, Critters and Gremlins, you can truly appreciate the complete lack of ambition in the munchies. I would love to have seen the faces on the actors who signed on to do the project when they saw the munchies for the very first time. I can only imagine the level of disappointment and the immediate sense of regret for signing on to do the project. I'm sure what was ascribed to them and what they actually saw were two completely different things. Look at this set design right here. I really don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of speechless. But just look at it, take it all in. This is what the 80s to early 90s looked like. We can't deny it. It's a part of our history. I also like how they screw up and show the top of the walls and reveal that this was a set built on a soundstage. Watch this scene and see if something jumps out at you as being not quite right. You gonna take that from no American Motors. You're gonna pay for this, you furry little wimps. Which way did they go? They went that way. Eat them. Sometimes audio recordings for a scene are unusable for whatever reason, or even sometimes they're lost altogether. If that's the case, Filmmakers do what is called ADR, Automated Dialogue Replacement. Best case scenario, the same actor comes back and re-records his audio for the scene. In a less than ideal scenario, a completely different actor comes in and re-records the audio for the scene. In that case, the video and the audio may seem a bit off, as demonstrated above. The most humorous error to me is what looks like a little hood on the camera that kind of keeps slipping down into the frame. It's not horribly noticeable, but nothing makes a movie look more amateurish than seeing equipment in the frame, like uh, boom mics and whatever this thing is. Shockingly, I, I did not find any boom mics. So good job, Mr. Boom Mic Operator. You did a fantastic job, and you are probably the only one. Can't you guys move it out any faster? The biggest question I have is who was this movie made for? What was the target demographic? Was it kids or adults? The Munchies was rated PG, but it was marketed as a horror movie more than anything else. Munchies is not a horror movie by any means. I think the original idea was to make a horror comedy, much like Gremlins or Critters, but somewhere along the way, the comedy just got way out of hand and just took complete control of the movie. I would say that Munchies 
is a slightly edgy kids movie with its uh, silly over-the-top humor. I would think that a G rating would have been a completely appropriate rating for this movie if it wasn't for a little bit of crude humor that pops up here and there. Keep in mind, this is a Roger Corman movie, but this is the most tame Roger Corman movie that I've ever seen. There's no nudity, no bad language, and no gore. But yet, this is still considered a horror movie. What the Munchies does have is cartoon-like violence and some mild sexual innuendo, but it's nothing more than you would see in the movie like Shrek. If I had to give the Munchies a grade, zero out of five, I would give the Munchies a two out of five. Um, this movie is not for most people. If you like really cheesy, silly movies, then you'll like the Munchies. But if you like more standard horror movies, then this is most definitely not the movie for you. It's not the best movie out there, but I gotta admit that I did like it, and I'm sure there's others, others out there that would, but the majority would most likely not like this movie.